This video is supported in part by Retro Days, a place for nostalgia nerds to gather, share memories, chat, and engage. Go to RetroDays.com or check their YouTube channel linked below. I've had my Atari VCS for about three weeks now, and not until now did I really feel I was ready to put out this review. Partially because of my own crippling procrastination, but partially also because I want to make sure I give the VCS a fair shake. Although it might have been better for viewership or numbers or anything like that, I really just didn't feel ready to give a review until I'd given this plenty of time to sink in. You know, when you first get a new piece of tech, there's that honeymoon phase where everything is brighter and shinier than maybe it would have been a week or so later. And so I've spent those intervening few weeks putting a lot of hours into playing with and exploring the Atari VCS. And you know, fittingly, one of the first things you see when you power up the VCS, this boot up screen, tells you a lot about what you need to know about the Atari VCS. I'll explain what I mean in my review right now. Don't you know that you're a grown up? No gates, no punts. Not a lot if you're a grown up. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I'm John and I am a Gen X Grown Up and admittedly a diehard Atari fan. So of course I was an early backer of the Atari VCS on Indiegogo. And of course I went with the ups and downs that everybody else did as it got delayed and the specs changed. And for a long time, even right up until its release, nobody was really sure what the Atari VCS was trying to be. Depending on what you read and where you read it, it's understandable if you thought the VCS was a new console, if you thought it was a set-top box, if you thought it was a mini computer, if you thought it was none of those things, you thought it was all of those things, because I'm not even convinced Atari themselves were sure where they wanted to position this box, other than just being a jack-of-all-trades. We've already given the VCS a fair amount of coverage here on Gen X Grown Up. I did a first look, I solicited our viewers for questions, which we're going to answer in this review. We even spent a couple of hours during a live stream exploring all the different games and applications that are available at launch. And I'll put links to those up in the corner or down in the description of this video if you want to dig deeper into those. I'm going to try not to tread on the same ground again, except where I have to reference things we've looked at before that are pertinent to reaching a review score in this video. So let me get started then by explaining what I was talking about in the opening when I said that a lot of what you need to know about the VCS can be seen right in that opening animation when you first power it on. You remember this? Do you notice what's weird about that right out of the gate? First off, it's like, ooh, an asteroid, and ooh, we're shooting the asteroid, and ooh, an Atari logo, and this cord, and then it just cuts off. Like, they forgot to finish the animation and just chopped it off arbitrarily. And much of what I'm seeing in the Atari VCS feels that way to me. Like they have a great idea and they got started with some really good concepts and they didn't quite go all the way to flesh them out or finish. One of the first overarching things to understand about the Atari VCS and where I have to draw a line in this video review is the fact that there's the VCS as it ships and what you can do with it. And I'm gonna work very hard to review that in this video. However, because the VCS has this PC mode where you can boot the VCS into a different operating system, that opens up a world of opportunities of what you could do with this unit. However, all of that is behind a tinkering wall. Unless you are comfortable, competent, and interested in doing more than what you get in the box and exploring what it takes to boot and get the BIOS right and all those kind of things, unless you wanna spend that time and energy your experience is gonna differ wildly from someone who just uses it the way it ships versus someone who is interested again in exploring all of that. So in this review, I'm talking about the VCS as it ships, but unavoidably, I'm gonna to have to reference that PC mode a couple of times because in answering these questions, it's not an absolute. So let's get going looking at the VCS and talking about some of your questions and getting those answered. When you first power up the VCS, once you get past that oddly abruptly ended opening animation, the VCS puts its best foot forward and gives you a great first impression. Everything is very much Atari themed. You've got that old Atari 2600 font throughout the UI. All of the apps are laid out in this grid on these kind of virtual shelves. And there's an app store where you can go and buy more apps and games to play on the VCS. So it's here in that UI that we can start to explore and answer some of your questions that you left in the comments to our previous videos. 
First up, Wyo Maddox Garcia asked about Discord and how it works in the VCS because it was right there on the shelf as one of the apps you can download. And that's where you start to see this unfinished feeling that the VCS has. There is a fully featured Discord app that you can open and you can use it just like Discord. Now, you can't navigate with the controller. You've got to attach a keyboard or mouse or use that VCS companion phone app. But all of that is really just Discord running in a bubble. You can use it, but if you close it, you don't continue to use it. Communicating in Discord, if you're using it to talk during a game or whatever, you can't do that at the same time. It's not like this big multitasking box that has Discord as an overlay. It's a run-of-the-mill app, just like Netflix or anything else. When you close it, you're done with it. Now, speaking of advertised functions, T2 asked about streaming. He saw right on the front of the box when we were opening it that it said streaming right on there. How does this help you with streaming? Well, I feel like streaming was just a buzzword they threw onto the box because you can stream from the VCS, but there's nothing in the VCS as it ships that will actually let you do streaming natively, unless you can do it through a Chrome browser somehow, and then what would you stream? Because the Chrome browser can't be running while you're running something else. So there are no apps currently to let you natively stream from the VCS, although we did stream from it in our live stream recently, but that was through a video capture device. So. Streaming almost just feels like they told you you could stream from it, but that's true of anything with an HDMI output. So you got off to a good start, but did you finish it? Jason and Fitty One had questions about what you could play on the VCS. Jason asked about 5200 games, and Fitty One asked about running your own ROMs on this box. So 5200 games, yes, you can play a few of them inside of the VCS Vault Part 2, which we downloaded and looked at and you can't really play your own ROMs natively. Now, again, I have to mention that PC mode, if you boot into a different operating system, and if that operating system supports emulation, then yes, you can do that, but only if you tinker. You can't open it, plug it in, and slap a ROM on it and start playing. So there's another example of something that could work, but it doesn't work natively. So missed opportunity. <laughs> You know, so far I feel like I'm just bitching about the VCS, about what it doesn't do. And the problem is it does plenty of stuff. It does bring them all together in one place, but not in a way that other devices don't already bring things together in the same place. It's lacking that killer app, the thing you've got to have, that you can only do on the VCS. That thing doesn't exist. Let's move along then and talk about controls. Now the VCS has two different controllers you can get. There's a modern controller that looks very much like an Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller. And then there's this classic controller that is very much obviously supposed to invoke the feeling you have playing with that old CX40 joystick that came in your Atari way back when. Cracking open this controller was just as much fun as opening the console itself. A brand new controller modeled in the style of the joystick that I held in my hand for thousands of man hours as a kid, that's cool. And the fact that it's not dedicated to just the VCS, you can pair this with another computer, is a really cool addition to the world of Atari that I enjoyed having. Now you might notice it's missing that orange dash ring around the base of the joystick, but that's not missing, it's actually in LEDs underneath this smoked glass. And often as you move the joystick, the LEDs will follow the stick, or those lights can even spin or flash when you get shot or hit if it's addressed by the software. So that's kind of a really cool way to update this old style controller. Marcus asked whether or not the VCS had a paddle controller, because that was a huge part of the 2600. And the answer to that is yes, and no, and yes, and sort of. So the CX40 style classic controller, this center stick actually rotates and it is a paddle controller. So you can play Breakout, you can play Kaboom if you can figure out how to run Activision ROM. You can play all those games like Night Driver. Now it's a little narrow spinner, so it's a little different feeling, but it does have it, they thought about it at least. You gotta give them credit for that. Jason was asking about his own USB controllers, whether or not they'll work here. And so far, I have not found a single USB device designed for a modern PC that doesn't just work right away when you plug it in. Keyboards, mice, controllers, a headset, all of those things. So yes, Jason, if you have an existing USB controller, you can plug it in and play games on the VCS right out of the gate with no modifications. However, I've got to point out another shortcoming here. I got the classic controller because why wouldn't I? I already have Xbox controllers, yawn. And when you boot up the VCS, there's a lot of stuff you can't do 
You can navigate the UI okay, you can get into some stuff, but many games and apps, they just don't respond to this. So it's like, we included it, it's a control scheme, but we stopped short of making it work everywhere. Oh, oh here we go again. Throughout all of our coverage on the VCS, we've shown hours of gameplay and app demos of the things that you can do from Netflix to Plex to Disney Plus to Discord to Chrome to many of the games that are in there. But all those games, aside from the Atari Vault 1 and 2, which are kind of rebranded for the Atari VCS Vault, most of the games you can get right now are kind of like mobile games and casual games and indie games, which is fine. But with a powerhouse name like Atari, why wasn't there an amazing, you know, Return of Adventure or Super Yars Revenge? You should have put something on here that absolutely crushed it and you could only play on the VCS. And that doesn't exist. So as I work my way into the summary of this review, a couple of our viewers who left comment questions absolutely nailed what needs to be answered in this review. Jennifer asked right to the point, is it worth the money? And what a fantastic question that's so difficult to answer. I don't want to cop out and say it depends on what you like and kind of thing. That does factor into it. If you're just bananas about Atari, you probably don't want to not have it because it's another Atari item to put in your collection and say you have. And if it takes off, you've already got one. But from a strict value proposition, I mean, I spent about 300 bucks on this or so. There are different bundles that run 250 to 450, depending on all the peripherals you can get. But honestly, as it stands right now, it's right on the borderline of being worth the money. Strictly as the hardware and what you get in it, maybe it's a little overpriced for what it is. You're paying the premium for that Atari name and it has lots of expandability. But again, I wanna set that aside because the expandability assumes that you're willing and able to do the work. I played with it a little bit, even though I'm not factoring it in this review, it's worth noting. So here's me booting up the Atari VCS in Windows 10. You can see I can go and look at the device manager and see all the memory I have and all the information about the PC. Windows doesn't know any better, it's just a computer. I think it's really important to shine a spotlight on this so you understand that stuff is there, even though we're not gonna factor it in to this review. And Graham had a fantastic follow-up question to that, which is, is the VCS a must-have Gen X purchase? And with all these things taken into account, absolutely not. It is not a must-have. Just because you owned an Atari when you were a kid and loved those games, that does not mean that this is something you gotta have. Is it gorgeous? I love the look of the hardware. I think it's phenomenal. The joystick, that's super cool. But if you're just looking to relive the Atari experience, there are plenty of ways to do that without throwing 300 bucks out the window. Yeah, it's a nice little piece of tech, but it's not gonna knock your socks off. Maybe it'll have a long life, maybe it will grow, maybe there's more it can do. But for now, there are so many things that it just didn't quite nail, or it didn't quite stick the landing, or it just didn't entirely finish. Yeah, exactly like that. That's how I feel about the entire VCS. I don't regret having bought it. Was it worth the wait? Probably not. Was it something that I could live without? Absolutely it was. So ultimately, I'm gonna rate the Atari VCS a, a little, a little, just shy of half. How about two and one third tokens out of five? It's got so much room to grow. If as a platform it does grow, this might deserve a follow-up review in a year or so when there's more to do and there's more absolute killer apps going on the device. But for now, if you're an Uber Atari fan and you absolutely love the looks of the machine and you have the extra money to spend and you don't mind tinkering to get everything out of it that is available, go ahead, grab this. But if you're just a casual fan, the VCS isn't for you right now. Maybe it will be in the future. So stick around and keep an eye on what they're doing with it. I really hope you found something to enjoy in this video and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, you made it to the end. If you liked this video, the best way to say thanks is to watch one more. Here are a couple suggestions that you just might enjoy. And if you love our content, maybe consider becoming a Patreon supporter by following the link on screen. Unacceptable for grown-ups. Your dinner cannot just be french fries.